Change of pace, time to talk health and wellbeing. With the silly season well and truly over, many people are in the gym trying to shed the unwanted kilos to tell us the best way to keep in shape and get in shape. Physiotherapist and Director of Keyser Australia, Tim Detman. Exercise myths, Timmy, tell me. Tell me about it. Good morning, Tim. Good morning. Hey, unfortunately, so many of these myths are pervasive in society and, and I really I love talking about them because I want to make exercise as simple as possible for people so we can get more people doing it. Well, tell us some of them. Tell what, what are the exercise myths out there? Well, I tell you one of the biggest ones is everybody who's carrying a little bit too much around their midriff, Tim, they think, oh, I need to go and do more crunches. They think, if I do crunches, I lose it from here. And it's an absolute myth because you can't spot lose fat throughout your body. So the best thing for you to do if you want to go and lose weight or lose fat around your midriff is get your diet right but then use the biggest muscles in your body that you can because they're the ones that are going to burn energy. And they say you cannot out-train a bad diet. Yeah, and that's 100% correct as well. And if you are in the gym, we know so many Australians at this time of year are going into the gym. Another really common myth, Tim, was, oh, I'm going to go and lift light weights because I want to build tone and I want to get endurance. And the heavy weights, well, they're just for the bodybuilders. Absolute myth. The academic literature has been really strong on this for probably the last five to ten years, mm. but society just hasn't quite caught up. It's really interesting from my perspective, but basically it doesn't matter if you lift a light weight that's like 50% as much as you mm. can lift or a heavy weight that's 80% as, as heavy as you can lift. It really just depends how tired you are at the end. Yeah. My advice, particularly for older Australians, particularly for females who are trying to protect their bone density, is you're actually better lifting heavy weights, because that's the stimulus that your bone needs, than you are lifting light yeah. weights, which is contrary to the way most people think. And what, what are things like F45 like, where you, you go in and you do circuits and you can sort of work to your own pace? Yeah, see, I love F45, but I think it plays a role for a certain age group. So the average age of the person attending F45 is probably around 30. But the Australian population is an ageing population. Mm. Where exercise can have the greatest benefit is actually in over 50s. So I think if you're untrained, uh, most people over the age of 50 have got one or two chronic diseases, mm. then that fast-paced F45 environment probably isn't the appropriate place for you to start. I, I would much rather that you go and start at a slower pace, uh, by yourself, ideally supervised would be better, supervised by a physio or an exercise scientist. And then work up, to a more, work up to that more. Intense yeah, intense. exactly. Otherwise, you end up injured. You end up in my office with a neck injury or a shoulder injury or a back injury, which I, I'd rather not see. Yeah, what about slow walking? I do a bit of that. <laughs> I think slow walking has just become a bit of an excuse for people to walk a little bit slower and do a little bit less effort. There was this myth that if I walk slower, then... I lose more fat than if I walk fast or if I run fast. And it's relatively speaking, yes, it's true, you burn a higher percentage of fat at slower, um, at lower intensities. But the problem is that you burn a smaller amount of energy overall. So my strong encouragement to people is if you're gonna go for a walk, go for a brisk walk, you know, just that point where it's a little bit difficult to hold a conversation, or even better, if you can, uh, go for a run. This idea of slow walking being the most beneficial thing to lose fat, I think we need to forget about that one in 2023. My wife's a physio, you know that as well, and all right into it, so she's always pushing me. Often she'll say, if you're going to walk, walk to the point where you're finding talking just a little bit difficult. So yeah, well, that, finding that you know conversation just a little bit difficult, so it means you're doing something. Yeah, that might be because Josie doesn't really want to talk to you That's while she's walking. <laughs> Don't blame her. No, you're exactly right. That's our measure. That's the best measure of moderate intensity exercise is where you can just hold a conversation and you might have to slow your conversation down just slightly but not completely cease conversation mm. at all. That's great advice from Get your strong. Wife. Yeah, all of her advice is good. Um, I'm not stupid. Get stronger, live longer. Yes, uh, fact. In 2023, fact. People who are strong and people who lift weights mm. live longer. So compared to a, a group of people who don't lift weights, those who are participating in strength training, 20% reduction in all-cause mortality. So that's things from cardiovascular disease, uh, diabetes, um, cancer, all of those. So 
don't think anymore that strength training is about putting on muscle or strength training is about aesthetics. Strength training these days is 100% mm. about quality of life. You want to keep playing golf, you've got to be strong. You want to keep playing with your grandkids, you have to be strong. And, and we didn't realise that 10 or 15 years ago. We thought it was just about aesthetics. Finally, Novak Djokovic, a, a three centimetre tear. Was, <laughs> is that all part of the mythology of the Australian Open winner? Look, I did hear that comment from Craig Tiley um, this week. And I'd have to say, as a physiotherapist that's dealt with a lot of hamstring tears and a lot of hamstring rehab, I'd be a little bit suspicious of that. I would love to see the scan for myself uh, and see whether it was a three centimetre tear or, or maybe a three centimetre signal intensity, which would be indicative of inflammation or mm. something like that. Because I, I do just find it very hard to believe. I mean, congratulations to him. If he got through and won the Australian Open with a three centimetre tear in his hamstrings, that's a seriously impressive effort. And uh, he, he deserves that title as one of the greats of all time. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh, whatever he is, he is the GOAT. Phenomenal performance. Good to talk to you, Tim. We'll catch you next week in this little health series that we're doing before Racing Dreams returns. Thank you very much, Tim.